So my name is Ricardo Capato. I'm the head of the Research Institute of Electrophysiology and Clinical Arithmology in um, Humanitas Hospital in Milan and the head of the Electrophysiology Department uh, at Gavazzeni Hospital, which is a Humanitas uh, affiliated hospital in Bergamo, close to Milan, Italy. I would uh, not dichotomize this into two separate uh, fields because they, the two most relevant developments belong to the same specific field. The first one was the introduction of catheter ablation, of atrial fibrillation, and the second was its um, gorgeous development over the last few years. Uh, it was first introduced in, in, the, in the 2000, and it uh, um, addressed for the first time the option of a curative treatment of atrial fibrillation, a century-long lasting kind of recognized arrhythmia for the humankind that was uh, always uh, untreatable before. So this was uh, an enormous paradigm shift in our capacity of uh, uh, approaching uh, atrial fibrillation. However, the first outcomes were not as optimal as we might expect at the time when we first recognized that we were able to do it. When we first recognized, we thought, it's fixed, and our expectation was enormously high, say 85, 90% success rate for every person who would approach um, its own atrial fibrillation with um, catheter ablation. But we, f we soon recognized that success rates were much lower, and recurrence would occur at a later stage, like uh, in 70 to 80% of the population. So it was only 20 to 30% of the initial population undergoing a catheter ablation of atrial fibrillation that was really fixed by that procedure, which was still an enormously relevant outcome, but less so than expected based on the original findings. When we recognized that more was required in order to improve and increase the number of patients that would be uh, fixed with catheter ablation, we soon developed a, a mapping and ablation strategies that would increase the original findings. And we can now say that uh, catheter ablation of paroxysmal atrial fibrillation can be fixed in about 70 to 80 percent of the patients presenting with this arrhythmia, and that mm, persistent atrial fibrillation can be fixed in about 50 percent of the patients, and this by the first ablation procedure. I think these are the two most relevant findings. And now many patients who previously were, I would say, resigned to live with atrial fibrillation during their entire life can enjoy a future of uh, normal sinus rhythm after catheter ablation.